This is your boy DJ Academics, and now where there's usually smoke, we could tend to find fire also. Now, once I saw the whole Donald Sterling thing happen, and Donald Sterling was one of the NBA's racist owners, he got outed by his ex-girlfriend. Once I saw that situation, how he was talking about, he didn't want blacks at his games, and he was talking about his friends, which he's in like an 80-year-old white guy who's an owner, and I'm wondering who the fuck are his friends. When I, once I saw he got exposed to be a racist, and then every other owner kind of stepped back and nobody was really speaking about it, I'm like, are we sure there's nobody else that has these same views or view black people within the same light? Now, Atlanta Hawks owner Bruce Leverson, he has come out and outed himself for making some remarks that are quite controversial and pretty much are racist. Now, he sent an email back to his team in 2012 where he was making a lot of assumptions and also he was pretty much giving suggestions how to dissuade black people from coming to the Hawks game that they could increase the amount of white people that would come. Now, first and foremost, there's a long letter where you could read the whole thing if you click in the link in the description. However, pretty much what he said, he said, listen, the games are 70% black. Because the cheerleaders are all black. Because we play hip-hop constantly. We're fucking playing Young Thug and Migos during every fucking time out. He says that the bars around the area are all fucking black. And we don't have any families attending the game. That's why we only have niggas. Pretty much saying black people, they just come as couples or they just come by themselves to turn up. But white people, they come as families. Not only that, he says all the concerts that usually happen after the games are either hip-hop or gospel. So we're he's basically saying, we're catering to all these niggas. They're not spending money. And when this is was, because he tried to frame it in a business sense. He Their whole goal was to increase season ticket holders, which makes sense. That makes sense because season ticket holders kind of guarantees a team they're going to get a certain amount of money. For the games that are going to be played. When you're selling tickets on a game by game basis. You're kind of hoping that the, the people that buy the tickets. Are interested in that particular game. That particular night. And that particular matchup against that particular opponent. So. Makes sense. A little bit. At least to get more season ticket holders. Now. Here where he goes severely left. Because he then narrows it down. To why his team has some of the lowest ticket sales. And the lowest amount of season ticket holders by just saying it's the black people fucking it up for us they're ruining the experience of the white people that would probably be season ticket holders now the thing is and i've heard a lot of people say oh well, well, he's only talking business because we love to just assume oh he's only talking business and usually i'm one to i love talking business but when he starts using blacks with pores interchangeably when if he was really talking business, he'd really talk demographics and talk about the demographics of where he lives. I mean, this fool was so inflammatory in the statements he was making. He was even mad that the kiss cam, the fucking kiss cam that was highlighting love was too black. So this fool didn't even like black love. Come on now. Now, listen, for those who think this is clearly just only talking business, let's compare some stats, right? Dallas, Dallas Mavericks, they're at the top of the league in attendance, in average attendance, and half of their population is white. Only 25% is black, which means in turn, most of the people that attend the game in Dallas are white. Half of the population is white. Now, Atlanta, half of their population is black. 38% of their population is white, which means you would expect that if half of the population or even over half of the population is black, most of the people are going to attend the game is going to be black. Now, rather than focus on the minority of the population, you focus on the majority of people you could appeal to. That's how I believe the USA works. You focus on the, ma the majority, and if you can, you get the minority. That's how most shit works. Now, hear this. Because what he's trying to say is that he's trying to say niggas don't spend money. So he's saying, fuck going after the 54% of black people that live within Atlanta. 
let's go after the smaller minority because niggas don't spend money. Now, he was even complaining about a lot of things that usually are stereotyped about black people. He said, our crowd, they show up the latest of all fucking teams. And we've always known that people love stereotypes saying black people show up to events on colored people time. So that's still an assumption. This That's still a stereotype. Now, he said he's been embarrassed because of that because he doesn't like seeing an empty fucking arena. Now, listen, I break down the problems of the Atlanta Hawks because, you know what, it's only a, it's, it's a really ignorant person that would just chalk up their loss of earnings or not being able to make a profit off. Oh, there's, there's too many black people. This guy said the black people are scaring the white people away. And now he's even saying he said that it hasn't been violent, even though people think it's violent around the, the, the neighborhood where the arena is. He said it hasn't been violent, but he just feels that black, too many black faces are scaring off the white people. Now, look at this. First and foremost, the problem with the Atlanta Hawks is that only 53% of the residents in Atlanta were actually born in Georgia. 19, about 20% are from elsewhere in the South. And another 20% is not even from the South. And 8% is from like a foreign country. Now, the problem here is that they don't have many local fans. That's it. The reason why they can't build a fan base is because they don't have local homegrown fans that want to root for their team. In all other markets, and for especially Dallas, they have a ton of homegrown fans. Atlanta is a place where a lot of people move into. It's, right now, it's culturally popping. A lot of people are moving into it, and it's of different races. Hispanic, blacks, other nationalities, and also whites. People are moving into Atlanta because it's buzzing at the moment. Now, it's hard to build a sports franchise there when you're predicating on local fans who are dedicated and loyal to the team who would want to spend money to purchase season tickets. Makes sense. Now, if you have people who are only uh, immigrants or just migrating into the city, why the fuck would they get behind the Atlanta Hawks just because they just moved in? Most of the people from Atlanta, they're usually like the teams that they just moved from those cities. So if somebody moved from New York, it's probably very well that they're still rooting for not only the Knicks, they're probably still rooting for the Yankees. They're probably still rooting for the Giants. Just makes sense. So rather than attacking race as one of the things that is causing you not to make money, how about looking at the demographics of where the fans actually are from. Now I could understand. Because he did mention in the email. That the target demo of the NBA is. 35 to 50 years old. Completely get it. Listen I get analytics as well. I, I know what that is. Cool. Great. But my thing is. And where I drew a big issue is. He chalks up a lot of things to race. He's basically making these assumptions. That black people. They're, they're either underprivileged or poor. He's using it interchangeable. They don't spend money. And the only people that do spend money are whites. Now for the people who work very hard. And there's a lot of entertainers that go to the games in Atlanta. And a lot of people who are either affluent or work pretty damn hard. Who are black. You got to feel offended at this. Because they're basically chalking you up to be in a lower economic class. Because he is skin color. And at least for me, I found it very disrespectful that this guy basically said that, listen, 40% of her audience coming to the game is black. And because the average is 15%, that doesn't come to, that goes to other people's games. So I'm, we're getting way too many niggas. 40%, way too many niggas. 15%, that's about right. He's not trying to be realistic and think about the actual demographics of his uh, his city because it's half is black. Half of the people in Atlanta is reported by the census is black. He's not thinking about that. He's trying to dissuade black people from the games by saying he wants new DJs. He wants more cheerleaders that are white. Just that he could fulfill what he think will increase business. Now, as I said, even though his goal might be to increase his business, obviously his racist views or his ignorant views clearly have leaked in and severely poisoned what could be any type of business discussion. Now, this completely disgusts me because for someone who hates to be considered in the general mold of what white people usually attribute to black people, and usually attribute to black people because of the lesser 10 of the black population, all the people doing all the coonery, all the nonsense, all the killing, all the gang shit, it's only about 10%. So 
I usually hate when people chalk up the whole black race to being them. So equally I have to be outraged when people chalk up the whole black race to just being a bunch of poor niggas who don't spend shit. Now you guys get in the comment box. What do you guys think? Make sure you guys like, comment, definitely subscribe. It's your boy DJ Academics and I'm out.